What's up guys? This is Ty Zen. With me today I have Kirk Ballou, the owner and founder of an app agency called Touch Titans in the city of Dallas. Say hello Kirk. How's it going guys? We're cruising from Dallas down to the city of Austin to meet the honorable grandmaster, legendary, world-renowned LeonFood.com. And uh, we're cruising down uh, the Interstate 35 here. We're passing a sign that says Austin is 60 miles away. So we have a few minutes to uh, you know goof off here in the Tesla on autopilot. Is it on 100% autopilot? We're on autopilot now. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but it's not the autopilot version that's like the top of the line, right? Is it the, the one that where you just sleep while the car's driving? No, th this is, they don't have the one out that drive, like this will drive you on the highway, but yeah. they haven't rolled out the one that will get you from the house to the driveway, right? Uh, okay. to, to the highway. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you said that's out testing, they're testing that right now in California? They do have that in California, yes. Okay, now, in this video, guys, um, I wanted to get Kirk's perspective because he just started investing in cryptocurrencies this year and you know he's a software engineer he owns a company that builds software for a lot of fortune 500 companies like you mentioned Home Depot um, uh, Red Bull Red Bull CNN Nat Geo um, okay Microsoft so, okay yeah. so, so you, you, you're not like a, 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 a rinky-dink uh, in your garage uh, app agency you build professional software for uh, Fortune 500 companies, right? Right. So when I want to get your perspective, and I think that it'll help the, the audience and the viewers out because we're a cryptocurrency investing channel, right? When when from your eyes as a software engineer, when you look at these different cryptocurrency projects, right? Right. What are you looking for before you invest into it? Like you build software and these cryptocurrency projects are nothing but software projects, right? Right. So what are some of the keys to success? Because you've had a lot of uh, businesses and startups come to you so that you can build software for them, right? And what do you see are the ones that are the char common characteristics of those software projects that succeed versus the ones that fail? Well, uh, you know, when I first got into it, I found uh, Ripple and saw, hey, there's an actual business plan. Um, now I knew with the supply being at 100 million, uh, at half a penny, it was still a very low valuation for the amount of traction that they had at the time. They had, they had the 51 banks in Japan. So that was the first investment. They have customers. Yeah, they had actual customers, okay. a, a tangible use case, right? Um, so it's similar to how we evaluate startups. Like we ha we have startups come to us all the time to build apps, and if it's a company where the person, the entrepreneur coming to us has an expertise in what they want to do, and they have an actual roadmap of how to execute it, they have a much higher chance of success, right? We have guys that just sort of like, hey, I have an idea, I want to do an app. Majority of the time, those guys aren't going to do well. If they're coming to us and they're like. I'm an expert in physical fitness and I want to make an app for physical fitness, that makes sense. Yeah. And it makes even more sense if they're like, I, I've got 100,000 followers on Twitter, I've got a built-in note. Uh, a, a, so a real use case of this is um, uh, Jeff Dwoskin, he's a guy who's been on Comedy Central that we built an app for him uh, that's all around doing Twitter uh, hashtag games, right? He already had an audience of 40,000 people following him on Twitter. We built this app to help drive traffic to that, so that was that was a one that did really well, you know. So that's where you you look at those factors before you dive in, like with a cryptocurrency. Um, you know, is there a tangible real world use case? Are also is the team do they have a LinkedIn? Oh, okay, so so yeah. let, let's talk about real world use case, right? Yeah. Let's just um, can you name one that you feel has a real world use case? from a software engineer's perspective? Right, uh, bat token. So um, that's where there's a real world problem where um, Facebook and Google have the majority uh, of the advertising is, is in their control. A lot, you know, most people that advertise use their, their platform, um, but bat token solves the problem of, there's a lot of click, you know, click bots and things that throw off the numbers where people don't really know if they're getting the money out of their investment. Yeah, so when people advertise right. on Google or something, 
and somebody's clicking on the ad, they don't know if it's a real customer clicking on the ad or if it's just a robot, a software out there that's clicking on the ad and then Google, you know, is charging you for it, but right. you don't know if it's a real customer. That's right. Yeah. So if it's a real customer, then the, the then the businesses don't mind. If it's a real customer, they click on the ad and then they decide they don't want to buy the product or the service. Nobody says anything about it. But what people, a lot of businesses have problems with is that if they don't want robots, uh, softwares out there clicking on those ads, and the business have to spend money on it, and then they're not getting any customers or any product sales out of it. Yeah, and there's not a, a good way for them to verify the value they're they're getting out of it. So Bat Token kind of it solves it from the user side. The user's saying, "I'm only exposing the the, the data I want to expose," as opposed to you tracking my every move. And from advertisers' perspective, it's in the blockchain. They're able to verify, okay, these are unique users that are experiencing this, and, and it's targeted uh, traffic. You know, so they're able to, you know, get it. So that's where you've got a real tangible use case, right? Okay. So just so you know, in in the cryptocurrency world, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whenever you talk about a cryptocurrency, there's always going to be these trolls and people that assume that you were paid by them. I'm not. To, to, to talk about their <laughs> coin. So no. when you disclose or you, it doesn't matter if you're an investor in them or you're paid by them, at least we disclose that yeah. so people know about it. You I, know? I bought some, I sold it all a while back because there was other coins I wanted to get into. But so right now you don't hold any bad I, tokens. I don't hold any bad okay. tokens, yeah. And, and yeah, I, the creator is the guy, uh, Brendan Ike is the guy who created JavaScript. So I'm a fan of him, I'm not, but nothing to do with the company. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I always say this is that uh, from our channel perspective, if you guys hear us talk about a cryptocurrency, um, always assume that either you know myself, I'm invested into it, or they are a sponsor of our channel. Okay, so the, that's I always say that just as a disclosure. Okay, um, you don't run this channel, so you don't have to disclose anything, but you did, so I'm, I appreciate that. Uh, right now, I don't hold any bad tokens. And, and they don't sponsor our channel or anything like that, okay? Right. So so you feel that that's a real world use case that has a real world application. Yeah. Okay, so now you, you have an example of something that you think is a joke or you think that, or you just don't, you don't think it's a scam, but you just don't see a real world use for it well, off the top of your head. Well, there, there's a lot of tokens out there that are just a white paper and hype and you know, you, you look at the GitHub for the, the coin and it's, nothing's been done yet you know and it, so there's a there's a lot of cases like that I don't want to call anyone out but yeah there's a lot you can point to that's like that okay so basically you're a software engineer so you look at their github where they store the right. software code and you can look at it and tell the log of when the last they last updated the software right right okay so from like myself I'm not a software engineer and our, a lot of our investors are not software engineers like you and Leon are right so when you look at the GitHub, right, what specifically are you looking for? So when you, besides the updates, what else are you looking for? So you can figure out how many people are like, the website you can expect is gonna have some hype in it, right? So when you look at the GitHub, you could see, it'll list how many contributors to a, uh, what they call a repository. When you create a coin and there's a repository for that coin, you can see if it's five people working on it, or one person working on it. One thing I look at that's a red flag, if there's one, it says on GitHub, up at the right of, top right of a coin, when you look at the repository, if it says one contributor and there's only like 10 check-ins, um, you know, obviously that, that's a coin that hasn't had a lot of attention, right? So that, that's definitely something that throws a red flag to me. So, okay, so from a software engineering perspective, do you know what GitHub is for? Can you explain to our audience, like, what is GitHub? Like, if they, if they are new to crypto and now they hear about GitHub, what is that? It's a way to, uh, basically, a way that teams work together on software. It stores the source code out in this cloud that uh, GitHub secures. And when you uh, open source that like a, like a coin or an ICO, that's where other people can go in and look at the code uh, that they've written and you're able to see the amount of, uh, you know, the check-ins, you can see what they changed, uh, you can also see how many contributors to that coin, right? So basically if you create a cryptocurrency and 
So GitHub is a place where you would store all the, the software code for it. That's right. And yeah. that's where anybody that wants to contribute to the project can go there, create an account, and add their code to your software project. That's right. A lot of them are like where you can contribute, but the team might have to accept your contribution before it would be merged in, that kind of thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so it's, it's, a, it's a directory, basically, or a resource where all that is stored so everyone can work on it. That's right. And yeah. you can see the updates, the modifications, the older versions, the newer versions, the test versions, and everything. Right. So basically, you're going there to see if, okay, on their regular website, they might announce that they're doing all this and hype it all up and everything, but you're going to the GitHub repository where their software is actually being stored at, and you're checking to make sure somebody's actually working on it. That's right. That's okay. right. It, and you might see that, like, I've run into ones where the last check-in was two years ago, right? And they're hyping it today like something's happening, right? So, But it hasn't been updated in two years. Right. Okay, so let's so that the the viewers have a reference point because if, if we just say that it hasn't been updated in a while or there's not enough contributors they're not going to have a reference point and not understand that so right. talk about how like for example like bitcoin and ethereum are the most popular uh, repositories out there on github like what are the number of contributors on like say bitcoin like is there like a hundred people working on it a thousand people or? there's a, there's a lot i mean just like you would evaluate a startup, I mean, you'd, ex you know, it, it depends what you're comfortable with. If you think, if it's one rock star developer, if it's, if it's Dan Lammer doing it, I'm comfortable. You know, if it's Vitalik, yeah. I'm comfortable. Or right? like Gavin Wood who wrote Ethereum. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. that, that's where you kind of base it on what's the, you know, part of that too is like, what's the street cred of the developer behind it, right? Okay, so okay, so speaking of street cred or, or the, the ability or the skill, when you're talking about street cred, you're talking about the skill of that software engineer, right? Right. So like, uh, in your mind, like how do you rank a software engineer? Like, for example, I'm not a software engineer, I'm just a, a bum software engineer. Uh, uh, I just use software, I'm not, the engineer doesn't go along with the word software, right? right. Um, so, like if I'm a, like, at the bottom of the scale of, of software skill, right? When you say someone's a rock star like Gavin Wood or Ethereum, uh, like Vitalik, uh, uh, or, or one of these guys, you know? Right. What are we talking about? Like, what, where are these, how, how do you measure these guys in your mind to well, say that that's a rock star? That's where, you know, if they've got the LinkedIn on their website, you can see have they worked at Fortune 500s before, or do they have other major projects under their belt, mm -hmm. or is or is this their first venture into crypto, or you know you know what I mean? Like you look into their background of, is this a professional level software engineer? Yeah, because we got a lot of guys right now yeah. working in their garage or in their mom's basement, running <laughs> these ICOs that yeah. raise 10, 20, 50 million dollars, and the public doesn't realize that these guys are just a bunch of clowns living in their mom's basement. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. Like, like, like. I mean, like, it cracks me up sometimes because these guys are. It's like these traders out there that you know that claim that they're cryptocurrency traders and they make uh, uh, a lot of money. But like you say, uh, you, you're you're concerned. Like, if they're making such good money from cryptocurrencies, why are they asking for donations? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like uh, yeah. there, there's a contradiction. It does, it, yeah, it doesn't quite something match doesn't, up. Yeah, right? something doesn't match up. You know. Yeah. Because we don't ask for donations on our channel. Nobody on our channel asks for donations. You know, we tell people to give donations to other people that ask for it, but we don't need it. Right. You know. So okay, but going back to the the software engineering side, right? So what are the other things that you look at in a cryptocurrency project besides the uh, the, the GitHub, besides the real world use case? Uh, besides their GitHub activity, what else do you look at? Just, just off the top of your head. So platforms uh, are definitely a, a difference. Uh, platforms usually do well. Like if you look at, um, and this is an investment advice, if you look at a NEO or an Ethereum or an EOS, platforms that other developers can go and build applications on top of, um, that's a, that's a new, a, a new level of functionality above something that just has like a Swiss Army knife of use cases, right? Okay. Um, so can you give an a couple of examples or maybe some examples of either one so that the audience has a, a better understanding of what you're talking about? 
Yeah, so like if you look at SciCoin, they, they've got a good use case of taking something that uh, file storage is big uh, in the industry. That, yeah, that's a huge industry. There's Yeah, like almost every startup you could think of is either using uh, Amazon or, or Heroku for file storage, right? Where SIA is using um, blockchain for file storage, it's a similar service to what you see with uh, Amazon S3, except for it's got blockchain security and it's actually cheaper than using Amazon. So that's where you've got a really good use case to, to grab a, a piece of market share. Um, so, so that's part, also I've noticed- wait, wait, wait. So you're saying that SIA coin is a single use case? But it's a good use case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a real world use case, and you're saying it's a single use case. Right. And but that's not you don't consider that a platform. Yeah. I mean, I consider like an EOS or a Neo, where you can build, you can create your own coin on it, you can build applications on it, mm -hmm. um, just like with Ethereum, you can build smart contracts to do escrow. Um, yeah. That, that definitely those have more value than just you know. A coin that has uh, a use, you know, uh, a real-world use case to it. Okay, so basically, uh, just a quick recap. You know, you look at uh, the real-world use case of that cryptocurrency project, mm -hmm. and see if there's any real-world uses for it, and then number two, you look at their GitHub activity, right. and then number three, you look at whether it's a platform or a non-platform. Right, and also the the total supply. Um, if it's on major exchanges, if it's the total supply, I've noticed coins that are over a billion have a lot of resistance. There's very few that have gotten over a dollar, right? Yeah. So, so th that's another major factor. So the, the supply of the coin. Right. And well, why, why do you think that that's a, uh, a issue? Like, why, why do you think that the ones that have like a billion coin supply have a harder time getting to a higher price? versus the ones that have a lower supply? Well, if you look at it, like they need a, a certain level of volume and traction to, to get the price up there. Like if you look at Ripple, they've had, you know, several months of awesome news and it's it's taken all that. I think it, they peaked at like 44 cents, right? Mm -hmm. You put that much good news behind a coin with a hundred million supply and I, you know, I think it'd be a lot higher. Um, Okay. I just, uh, when you've got a total supply that big, I, I look at it like a table with 100 billion coins, you've got a lot more weight to carry the whole thing up, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, guys, um, Kirk is a professional software engineer. I'm not. He's like, uh, you know, in the software world, like leonfood.com, and I'm not, you know, like I always say, I'm not one of those real Asians that know uh, math and science and software engineering like these guys do so I just wanted to talk to Kirk and get his perspective on how he looks at software development and hopefully that will help you guys make a better investing decision when you guys are looking at different cryptocurrency projects out there so thanks for watching this video if you guys like it give me a thumbs up if you guys don't like it give me a thumbs down so I'll know not to make them and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video